Hi, my name is Scott the Miniature Maniac, and today we're going to get mini painters started in terrain building. What up, mini family? I got Jeremy from Black Magic Craft in my house for a couple of days. I did a collaboration on his channel. He's on the Trapped Under Plastic podcast. You can check Jeremy out at his channel, which is linked in the description again, called Black Magic Craft. Today we're talking about terrain building and how miniature painters can get into that hobby with the tools and materials they have and what extra ones they might need to buy. And how's this video gonna work today, yeah. Jeremy? Um, well, we're gonna hang out, discuss some very basic items that we went out and bought today. Yeah, uh, we, we had a shopping spree. For, for, the, for the most part, Crossing over from one hobby to the next is about as good as it's going to get yeah. for hobby crossover. You're, you're going to have a lot of stuff. You're going to have a lot of knowledge. But there's a few things that the average mini painter might not have in their tool set because it doesn't necessarily apply. So today right. we went out, we grabbed a few of those things. We're going to talk about some of the things that we didn't get. And we're just going to hang out and we're going to build a really rudimentary build. You said you wanted to build an Elven Waystone or something. Heck yeah, what else? I don't Obviously. know exactly what that is. I, I play different nerd games, but <laughs> it's a stone with like symbols on it made by elves. Exactly. So I'm going to, yeah, I can build that. First, I want to say like, if you're getting into t terrain, yes. right? Like you're like, you paint minis, you, you play tabletop games, whatever they are, and you want to start building terrain. There's kind of like two paths you can take okay. for in terms of function. And one is natural terrain. That's like your hills, your trees, your shrubbery, right. rocks, those kinds of things. And then there's the like the man-made artificial world, like buildings and walls and structures yeah. and those sorts of things. And both of them require a little bit different of an approach and skill set. The more man-made stuff requires a little bit more tools, a little bit more time, bigger investment. Maybe more measuring, maybe more measuring, precision. Because you're replicating precision. Right, yeah. Whereas natural stuff where this like waystone thing's gonna fall into is, it's a lot more free form. There's a lot more room for messing around and you don't need as much fancy stuff, which you don't have. Yeah, so if you're a beginner and you haven't done a lot of terrain, going that more natural road is probably a good first step. Yeah. Typically, whether you're making buildings or hills or rocks or whatever, the main material you're going to use is some form of extruded polystyrene. Okay. You're going to hear lots of people say XPS, extruded polystyrene, okay. insulation foam, foam core. It's all kind of the same stuff. So I got here, this is insulation foam. Got it from Home Depot. From Home Depot. The brand does not matter. There's m multiple brands across every country that make this stuff. It is a extruded polystyrene. It's used to insulate buildings. Comes in all sorts of different colors. Don't get hung up on that. And then there's something like foam core, which you would have seen in the past, you know, two pieces of paper, foam mm -hmm. in the middle. Some people might call it poster board. Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, the internal of this is the exact same material as this. Oh, I didn't know that. It's the exact same thing. This you can buy in all sorts of different thicknesses from like quarter inch up to like three or four inches, but that's gonna depend on where you live. Okay. You, like me, live in a beautiful tropical, place <laughs> which means it's cold as shit here <laughs> just like where i'm from which means your home depots have everything in stock right. because this is important here right yeah but there are alternative sources okay this is the most important thing i'm gonna say in this video the is, most important thing the most okay. important thing lots of stores have this stuff yeah dollar stores have it like places like michael's hobby lobby walmart they're gonna have this there's lots of different brands this one particular brand it's a company called adams it's called Ready Board. It's sold at Dollar Tree specifically, okay. which across Canada, across the United States should be able to find. Okay. And it is, what they're selling you is the internals. This paper is just a protective coating because it's meant as craft foam. Right. So when you bring it home, you can peel it off. And it just comes right and that's off. The magic, that's the magic right there. So no. all of a sudden you take both sides off. And now you have extruded polystyrene, but now it's you have much thinner. Now you have a thin bit of extruded polystyrene. Paper plates, meat packing trays, it's all extruded polystyrene. Okay. You I see, actually didn't think of that either. You just start to see it in, in, in different places. Right. This is the beauty of crafting terrain, I think, is that a lot of it just comes down to being resourceful. resourceful. So knowing where to find it, I didn't even think about the styrofoam yeah. plates. That's a, if, that's a great if, idea. If you go to the like the party store, the dollar store, you buy a uh, 
pack of 50 styrofoam plates, you have enough to make wood planks and shingles for the rest of your life. <laughs> okay. What, whatever you're going to build, you're going to have to put it on some sort of base, mm -hmm. arguably. Mm -hmm. This is where it gets a little bit more challenging, but I think most people who are hobbyists are not going to have a hard time. You want something that is durable and rigid, that's not going to warp a lot, mm -hmm. uh, and that is ideally easy to cut. Now, okay. MDF, like quarter inch MDF mm -hmm. on a bigger thing, maybe one eighth MDF on a smaller thing is ideal. The trouble with that is it's hard to cut. Right. If you're gonna want a jigsaw and like a palm sander to shape it. Right. You can do it with like a little coping saw. Yep. If you got patience and strong forearms. <laughs> A lot of hobbyists probably have strong form. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Cut. If all you have is a knife, you're gonna want to turn towards material that's a little bit easier to cut and work with. Yeah. There is a mystical material called EPVC that is basically not MDF. This. Not this. We'll get to it. <laughs> chill, chill your, chill your jazz. I'm so excited. You can carve it with a knife. It's really rigid. It doesn't absorb water. It's amazing. If you can find it, great. I can't give you a lot of advice on how to find it because I've never been able to find it at home. It's like made for sign material. I don't know, if you can find it, great, eBay it, whatever. Mm -hmm. But now let's say you don't wanna cut with power tools, you don't have EPVC, you can turn to chipboard, which is basically pressed particle board. It's kind of like MDF. I often use what's called medium weight chipboard, which is similar to the stuff you're gonna find at the back of a notepad. Okay. You know that one backer piece? Yep. And it's really thin, it's not that durable. Okay. but it's really thin easy to use you okay. can step up to something thicker like this is you know probably it's less than an eighth of an inch this is great because it's kind of the in-between uh it's going to be rigid like mdf okay but you can with effort and carefulness cut it with a knife <laughs> you want to carve up this actual foam mm -hmm. again you can use a hot wire but we're not there yet, probably. We're just yeah, dipping our toes. Yeah. So the most important cutting utensil, and I'm gonna say to me, is this, even more than my hot wire. And this is, we're just gonna call it at first a box cutter. Right. There's but it's a, special, it's a, a special There's one. a lot of box cutters on the market. They're kind of divided into two categories. One is a, like a snap blade, these long blades that retract and you can snap them. And then the other one are those shorter triangle. They have two Razor points. blades. Razor blades, yeah. yeah. Avoid those at all costs. They are absolutely useless for this purpose. And the reason is that a lot of the foam you're working with is gonna be thicker than those blades are long. Yeah. And when you're working with this stuff, if you're doing something like a stone where it can be rough, it doesn't matter. But if you wanna get a somewhat clean line, you're gonna to wanna to be taking multiple passes and you want a blade that's long enough to go all the way through the foam. And I specifically like this brand. It's called Ulfa. Uh, it's really prevalent back home. We had a hard time finding it at Home Depot, but mm -hmm. we found it at the art supply store, which is right. odd because to me, this is a contractor tool. Like I learned to love these tools being a contractor. Mm -hmm. And I like them better than all the competitors because of the ratchet style wheel. Uh, it's just the most ergonomic feeling one. But most importantly, I found that their blades are the ones that stay sharp the longest mm -hmm. and are thick and rigid. They have silver ones, they have black ones that I think are carbide, and those ones are a little bit more expensive and they are, I think, worth the extra cost when you can find them in bulk because you pay a little bit more, but the life of the blade will last a lot longer. You will also want an exacto for stuff like foam core, you know, if you're carving little things or if you're carving designs, like we're gonna, you know, if you're carving a rune into something, you wanna pre-cut that with a fine tipped fresh exacto and then deepen that recess with some kind of awl or sharp pencil or metal sculpting tool. Mm -hmm. And that's how you're gonna get those nice indented lines. You can make bricks, you can make cracks in stucco, you can make runes, you can make cobblestones, you can basically sculpt this with a knife and a tool. But it's, you always gotta think of it like a two-step process where you wanna cut the foam first and then bevel the, the cut to create a groove that's more visible. Okay. If you try to just use a tool to do that indent uh, or a pencil, oftentimes you'll find that the foam will rip. Oh, and it creates little yeah. tears in the and bottom tears. of the carve. Okay. And one thing about this styrofoam is it is kind of like wood in the sense that it has a grain. Right. If the fibers are running one way, when you try to carve with the grain, it's gonna work beautifully. It's just, oh. It's gonna be so nice. And then you're gonna go this way. Oh my God, I have never noticed that. And it's gonna tear. 
But if you pre-cut it, in theory, it doesn't always work. But that's the difference between that and that. That's amazing. Another useful tool that I don't necessarily use myself, but a lot of people do, if you're doing things like rocks, specifically you want the, you know, the cliffside rocks that have a lot of striations, little mm -hmm. indents. Yeah. Something like a serrated steak knife is a fantastic tool. You just gotta play with it. Right. Just take out some material, cut it up, play with it. You will start to get a feel for it. Right. It'll, 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 just like when you're painting, you get to used to how your paint's gonna flow at a certain, like thinness. Other tools around the house are really useful. Wire brush or a barbecue brush. If you want to make wood timbers, this is one of the easiest ways you can do wood grain. No skill, there's wood grain. You're going to create some item, a stone, a rock, maybe a tiny building, a wall, a wall. Yeah. Uh, and then you're going to want to put it on some sort of larger decorative base. You're gonna attach them together, mm -hmm. and you mini painters, gotta get yourself a hot glue gun. Yeah, okay. You're gonna, you're gonna want a hot glue These gun. These guys use hot glue for everything, yeah. okay? If you don't got a hot glue gun, you are worthless to them. You guys are. You guys have patience that we don't have. <laughs> like spending 40 hours glazing, no, screw that. You wanna be able to just keep banging things on, you wanna get that terrain done in a day. So hot glue is great, because it's instant, it's instantly bonded, and in particular with foam, because it's hot, it slightly melts the foam. Once you get it on your base, you've cut out your base, sanded the edges, have a nice shape, you're gonna to wanna to do something to marry those two pieces together so it doesn't just look like it's fitting on a flat you right. know, piece. There's a lot of different things you can use to do that. My favorite is sculpt mold which is, it's essentially like plaster that has shredded paper Paper in mache it, in it, yeah. It makes it super strong. You can put it on just rough, let it, tack up or set up for 20 minutes and then you can use like a wet finger to really blend it and smooth it. You want to see them like like Luke loves playing with this Luke stuff. Luke is a big fan yeah. of sculpt the mold. I meant I meant the other Luke. Luke My Luke PS as well. Luke, yeah. All, Luke's Both love. Luke's, yeah. Luke approved. Yes. However, this is kind of a more specialty art supply. Yeah. Uh you're a little bit more expensive a too. Bit. So, if you don't want to use something like that, if you're doing small bases, they're not huge, and you're a mini painter, you probably have some Milliput. Mm -hmm. Milliput is fantastic. This is about the best thing you can use for a base because it's gonna dry really hard. It's not gonna shrink. The enemy of the base is shrinkage on whatever you put on it because when that stuff shrinks, it pulls tighter towards the middle and then you get a curled base and it's the worst thing in the world. Milliput's not gonna do that. This is amazing, but obviously you're not gonna wanna use this in large volume. A kind of in between would be an air dry clay. So there's like DAS is a really popular brand that's mm -hmm. like global. I'm pretty right. sure everyone in every most countries can get DAS. It's huge. Yes. However, use this with caution. This stuff does shrink as it dries. Mm. If you're just doing a little waste stone on a little base and you have styrofoam taking up most of the base and this is just like a perimeter edge and it's thin, yeah. it's not gonna cause you as much of a problem. There's also an option like Crayola makes, it's like called Model Magic. It's for little kids. You can buy it at like Walmart or dollar store and it's also an air dry clay. It won't dry as hard as this, but I mean, if you don't have access to a lot and all you have is a Walmart, you can get that stuff and play with it. Okay. Uh, again, don't do it on something too big, but for a little base, it will be totally fine. Awesome. I said something else was the most important, but the other most important thing <laughs> is uh, once you have a piece of foam made, it is not durable. Right. Like you it, can chip it, it off and paint comes it, off. It is soft. So one thing you can do to kind of preserve it, it's not perfect, is you can put some kind of a hard coating on it. Okay. A lot of people will turn towards PVA glue. And I don't, I think that is a mistake. I think that it's a perfectly fine option if it's your only option. Okay. Worst case scenario, do it. Okay. It will make the foam harder. That's great. However, the problem with both those glues is that they're water soluble. Okay. So you're going to end up moving on to painting this thing after, because I recommend you harden it before painting. Makes it's, sense. It's, as a primer. That's yeah. essentially a primer. Makes it easier to paint. Yeah. You're going to get to all your painting and then your washes. And with terrain, you are putting a lot of liquid on the washes. Yeah. And if that glue rehydrates, you put a wash on and then you start brushing it, mm -hmm. it'll rehydrate it, activate it, and it will start smearing and coming yeah, off and, and create a mess. And yeah, it's gonna look heinous. It's not great. So that's why I use 
Mod Podge. So many people think it is just PVA glue. It is not just PVA glue. I thought it was just PVA glue. Go look up the MSDS yourself. It is not just PVA glue. It's like 90 some percent PVA glue. It is PVA based. It smells like PVA glue. That's mostly what it is. Mm -hmm. But it has two elements that make it better for this purpose. One is that this has flow aid in it. Okay. This actually has a flow aid, which is great because if you make something that's fine detailed and you're slopping on a thick layer of glue, uh. it's going to clog up your nice detail work. This just like in painting, in a wash, you have a flow aid, it's gonna make it spread thinner. Right. So that's great. But the really nice thing is that it actually has an acrylic sealer in it, like a uh, like a resin or a clear coat, okay. which makes it not water soluble. Okay. And you wanna buy the matte stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't buy the glossy stuff because you're basically using this as a primer. You don't wanna be painting gloss. I personally always pre-mix mine with black paint because then it base coats your terrain piece black first, making mm -hmm. it easier to paint most colors. But whatever you're doing, you can mix acrylic paint right into this to act as your first step of paint all in one. It helps you see where you've painted and where you haven't. And yeah. Speaking of paint, you want to ignore your beautiful paint collection. I think, yeah, this is probably true for a lot of the hobby products that we use. Paints and washes. Yeah, paints and washes, forget you even own those nice ones that you've collected over the year because you don't want to waste that amount of volume on large terrain pieces. So absolutely buy yourself some acrylic craft paint, you know, your folk art, your apple barrel, your deco art, whatever other brands there are, Americana, mm -hmm. they're all gonna work fine. You don't need to go buy every single color. I'd recommend buying black, whites, a few grays if you want to be lazy about mixing and make be able to make consistent stones. Like all your stones are always You know, dark stones gray and light are always gray. kind of consistent in real life. They're the yeah. same gray. Well, if you're making a board, <laughs> if you're making a board, right? Uh, and then like some earth tones and some browns, you like get six or seven, maybe get ten, earth, get earth colors. Earth tones. Yeah. And then if your piece of terrain needs another color, like you do a waystone and you want to have a nice glowing green well then you break out your good paints right. and you, you do That's like the detail amount. work sure right. and also not using your good brushes okay you know one your your brushes are gonna be too small for most purposes you're gonna want to get some of like the big craft brushes go to the craft store buy one of those variety bags of big brushes dollar store uh, another tip is for dry brushing a really good option is really cheap no-name brand dollar store makeup brushes. It's not no-name. It's actually wet and wild. Wet, wet and wild. Which is definitely an indication of how this week is going This right is now. getting pretty wet and wild. But we got a good thing we got that Mod Podge coating. <laughs> so these, these makeup brushes are really nice because they're cheap, essentially disposable. Use them for a while and check them out. Although dry brushes last forever. Right. Pretty we, much. We got them from the dollar store. They're a buck a piece. We got a few different sizes. Yeah. So yeah. God, are they soft? They're really make at me. Oh, Let me yeah, clean okay. your glasses. Yeah, no. Dirt, dirty ass glasses. Everyone hates my glasses, the, okay? The filth is on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not talking about it. <laughs> if you want to take things the extra mile, you can add some little adornments. Uh, if you want the, that base to have a little bit more life, you might want to be using like some static grass, yeah, a little some flowers, flocking, yeah. flowers. Uh, maybe like uh, punch some little leaves. Oh yes, you are right? speaking my language um, right now. Put a little cobweb on, go nuts. It, but that kind of stuff, you know, I'm not gonna say go out and buy to start crafting. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend that, you don't need it. And most people who are transitioning from just modeling to like to train making probably already have a collection of some of the stuff. And you're gonna use the same stuff because the scale of the little shrubbery on your mini's base should be the same scale of the terrain you're making for it, and they should be exactly. cohesive. Exactly. So maybe just when you're buying that stuff, if you're planning on building like a board or terrain, just buy more of it. Right. That's really it. Also, get back to being resourceful. Uh, tea is fantastic. Yeah. Tea bags, you break Herbs. open tea bags. Yeah. Herbs. Go steal sand from the sandbox. <laughs> Hopefully no kids peed in it. <laughs> That's a risk you're going to take if you're stealing sand from a kid's sandbox. That's going to do it for the video, guys. I hope you like the process of talking about the tooling and also making the Elven Waystone. Thank you, Jeremy, for coming over and teaching us everything you know about crafting and what we can learn as miniature painters. Again, if you want to check out Jeremy, his stuff is linked in the description below. Uh, if you like the channel and you want to support it, all links are down there as well. But most importantly, don't forget to paint more minis! Hell yeah.